Everett Barbie, a Tennessee native, fell in love with Islamic calligraphy when he travelled to Damascus in 2007. The 24-year-old American's interest in the decorative style of handwriting took him back to the Syrian capital in 2009, where he stayed there for five months to learn more about his newfound passion. Unable to return to Syria in recent years, the young artist moved to Lebanon to make a living as a calligrapher in Islamic art. He now spends hours on his rooftop studio engrossed in delicate writings, many of which are verses from the Quran. Barbie says one of the main aims of his artwork is to change Western perceptions of Islam. My, my motivation uh, for doing calligraphy is to celebrate uh, the Middle East and the Islamic world uh, and to celebrate Islam uh, and try to break down some of these uh, misconceptions that we have, especially in the West, uh, these Islamophobic ideas uh, that are basically just a result of ignorance. I mean, I find that the Islamic culture is very welcoming, very warm, uh, and there's a lot of uh, misconceptions, so I'd, I hope to break these down uh, through my artwork. He became interested in Islamic calligraphy at a young age, though he was initially discouraged from following an artistic route at university. I was always told growing up that uh, you can't make any money as an artist, uh, which is why I did international business. I, I didn't even study art at university. He now sells his artwork via the internet and is making a decent living. With the internet now, it's, it's extremely easy to make a living, especially if you have uh, a style that's unique or you're doing something that uh, other people aren't doing. It's uh, very easy and uh, make a comfortable living. His current project, Quran for Solidarity, is perhaps the most challenging so far, writing out the entire text of the Quran by hand. Everett aims to introduce the Quran to those who are yet to uncover its beauty. I've got two major projects at the moment. Uh, one is the Quran of Solidarity, uh, in which I'm writing the entire Quran uh, from start to finish in 114 pictures, or surahs. So each surah will have its own uh, picture. And these are mostly uh, geometric pieces, because I don't want to depict like, people or living things. So it's, uh, I try to stick with something that's respectful to Islam, but also very beautiful, uh, so that you know, a Western audience can also enjoy these pieces as well. I mean, that's fascinating. Calligraphy, you know, calligraphy I mean, is he's so... Not even, he's not even Muslim, no. but he's fascinated by it. And I he's think travelled over and done I, it. I've spoken to so many non-Muslims, and the first thing they say to you is they say, your calligraphy, the way that... And they, I think, that, to be honest, they assume we all draw like that or write like that because yeah. they see the Islamic writing. But it is amazing. It does have that effect on people. No, I'm not creative at all, really. Well, let's be keeping honest. in theme with our creativity, our second guest of the night has That's indeed right. discovered a new way in which to use henna. That's right. She's replaced pens, paint and ink with a new and very effective art form. So please welcome to indeed. the show Farah Azam. Salam alaikum. Now, now, what do you actually do? You, do you actually work in... Were you creative when you were younger? No, I wasn't. It was completely random to me, so actually. What happened? Where, where, I mean, these are fantastic pieces. We're going to have a look at them later on. But tell us of your journey. What made you put pen to paper, as they say? Yeah. What's that thing called? A henna cone. A henna cone. Yeah. So, so that's it. So we've seen the traditional style. I mean, it's very, very beautiful. People have the henna tattoos, and often at weddings, it's traditional, isn't it? The ladies have it done yeah. all over. Actually, I've seen more guys doing it recently oh, as well. Really? I have. I've seen people doing like temporary tattoos that have their name on yeah. their back or something like that, just for a bit of a laugh. But you decided to go a different way. Yeah, I mean, what happened is I actually studied psychology at university. I got married straight after graduating and I had a child. And um, I was at home, not working, sort of just a stay-at-home mum thing. But I think after a little while, the novelty wore off a bit of not doing anything else. And so I wanted to do something a little bit creative. I think it's really important to have a creative outlet. And um, henna is very common in our culture. Yeah. So I thought, why not like go and have a look at doing a course? So I actually found a course with a world-leading henna artist. Uh, Ash Kumar. It's yeah. Huge from what I've heard. Yeah. So um, I did a course with him, and it, I just learnt the sort of skin art. Um, so I just started doing it as a hobby on family and friends, and then I remember one day I ran out of hands to paint on, so I painted on a piece of paper, and then I remember when it dried, I looked back at it and I thought, that actually looks really nice. So it was as random as that? You, just, it was, you were just You were itching to do a design? Yeah. But you must have had a flair for it, because I've no. seen, I mean, uh, you must have, you can't... I actually didn't, I've, I've never studied art, like I, it, it, was, it wasn't it really... Sometimes it just takes a bit of an incident to bring it out. 
yeah, like I, ju I think I just really needed to do something with you know, my time. My niece. I mean, look Lisa. at our, our last guest, for example, Napoleon. Yeah. He tried to do something totally contrary. <laughs> yeah. He ended up somewhere else. He <laughs> well, obviously had it in him. My, my niece has got it in her. My niece, I've got to say hello to my niece, Onesa. She's amazing at this. She's only about 12 years old. I think she's 13 now. She'll beat me up for that. But <laughs> she does this. But you have a natural flair. She has a natural flair. You yeah. must. Because I believe me, if I try something like that, and I think we might have to try later. I think we are uh, going to try it's, it. It's a disaster. I can't. I mean, the, the intricacy of the designs. I mean, where do they come from? I, it took a lot of practice, and um, the, the, my inspiration comes from so many different places. I mean, I a lot of it is from my travels. I mean, I visited Turkey, and I'm quite inspired by the Turkish art. I mean, there's mm. one particular art which is um, it's called Iznik art, and it's used quite a lot on pottery and ceramics, <laughs> and um, that's uh, like traditional Ottoman arabesque patterns with Chinese elements. And they radiate a lot of shades of blues and greens, and that really inspires me and my work. And the Ottomans use a lot of those bluey shades, mm. don't yeah. they? Very I mean, nice. so from that piece of paper, you went on to what went, was the next piece? So then I, I just looked into a little, like I sort of tried to do a little bit of research on how to seal it onto a canvas, and I did like a six month test to see whether it would stay well preserved. And then it was actually my best friend Rabia who was like, you know, this looks really good make a Facebook page, start presenting it to the public. Um, and at first I was like, I don't want to do that because I, know, I don't think anyone's going to even look at me. But I did it. She was persuasive enough to sort of push me into it. And um, I did it and it was a good choice because well, it, a lot of people so started well, the results, The results candles, speak for themselves, I mean, don't they? I mean, if we can get a close-up here of some of these candles, I mean, they're absolutely beautiful here. Um, I'm going to leave them there. I think we can get a, a shot of these. I mean, they are extremely intricate. You've painted them as well. I mean, what I'm surprised about I thought that when I was going to hold it, I was It'd imagining it was all going to fall <laughs> yeah. off, all the henna. It's very, that very one robust, isn't holding. it? How long very. did it take you to do that? Um, this one took me about an hour. Um, it was double an the hour? time. Well, so, oh, you're not supposed to say that. You're supposed to say this took a week. Well, at the beginning, it was really difficult, but I think because I'm so, I've done hundreds of products now, it's become a lot easier for me now. So you do mirrors, candles. Yeah. Canvas. I've What's done instruments. Um, yeah, I've done quite glasses. You don't do hand glasses. anymore. No, I, I I never really did. That was just sort of the hobby part of it. Well, look, what do you do? Where do you, where do you, where do you, do you sell these? What do you do? Yeah, I sell these on my website bestbokehenna.com, and um, also you can uh, view my work on my Facebook page. Um, I want to have a go. <laughs> yeah, we want to. Do you know what? I've seen go. people doing it. I have to say, it does look a bit easy. The way they squeeze that thingy and the stuff comes out. And just within seconds, they've got something. You brought something. Yeah, I have. What have you got for us? Let's have okay, a go. Okay, so I've got. What do you reckon? Well, you tell us what to draw. He'll try our shot and I'll have a shot, and we'll, well see who well, comes out best. Well, I think it's mainly patterns, isn't it? I'm not yeah. going to draw Mickey well, Mouse. Well, the first so thing that we always learn whenever you know when I did my course as well is like a floral, like a flower. It's okay. the simplest thing. I could do that. So here's the henna kind. Right, I'll do my flower, then you do your flower, okay? <laughs> you, you keep chatting in the meantime. You keep, you keep chatting away. I'm so, going to do my flower. I mean, what do I do? Are you just it? selling online? Are you supplying other people? I do have. Um, I well, I have supplied it to a few shops, and there's. Well, I've got one regular buyer in an area called Hampstead. Um, I do events um, in London. Um, the best way to sort of find us is to um, check on our Facebook page. How did you manage to find time with a three-year-old? Well, um, it was really hard at the beginning. Um, my son is quite difficult, he's, you know, at that age. So I, you know, when you've got a passion for something, when you really want to do something, you do have to make sacrifices and you do have to make compromises. And I basically work quite late at night, so I don't get much sleep. But also, I prefer working at night because at night, this is when I, you know, this is when I can really concentrate. Because as you can see, my work is quite intricate, and you Sorry, know, he's laughing because I'm, I'm so I'm chuffed. Fast I'm really all, chuffed here. Oh, look, look, look. There we go. Have a, look. have a look at that. Look. That's actually really good. There that's you go. Because that's something very similar. To no, you that's got, better than you, what you, I was when I oh, first wait, started. There we go. Look, you got a shot of that there. There you go. That's my flower. Now, Naeem, you got a better that. I'll, I'll continue the conversation oh, in the meantime. God. Have you been Have you been surprised at the response? Because, um, you know, I've never heard of the idea. I, I really haven't heard of it before. And when, when it came on, I, I just imagined it was all going to fall off. Yeah. But you've done mirrors and you're doing artwork yeah. and all this. What's the response been like? I mean, are people interested in buying it? How's the website going? Are you going to be able to give up your day job? It is going... Um, it is. Well, my day job is looking after my son, so I can all never right. give that up. And then, son, we've got to say hello to him. What's his name? Bubble. We get slams here. Salam alaikum, Babu. Coming over here. Salam alaikum, Babu. There you go. <laughs> Mum's here. Very proud of you. Um, yeah. So I think w when I started this, um, I wanted to do something a little bit different with henna. I wanted to. <laughs> I want it to be sort of appreciated by all cultures, and I wanted yeah. to change people's perception about henna. Because at the moment, I think it's a very East African Asian yeah, phenomenon. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So um, what I did with my work is I've made it quite contemporary, <laughs> so that it can sort of target a Western market. So 
Vintage is huge at the moment. I've done like an East meets West sort of range with vintage There's a lot designs. of that. I mean, we, yesterday we had some uh, we had some clothes designers on who were doing exactly the same thing. They were doing Islamic clothing for women, but it had that kind of Western influence while yeah. still maintaining the modesty. And I think there is a market for that. Have you done some? That's, That's just a complete pirate. <laughs> Exactly the same as mine. That's really good, though. That's that's oh, actually better I'm than what I thought. No, 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 no. We could actually set up your business. Oh, I don't think you're gonna get very far unless it's for Mr. Men. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, there you go. Look. We'll have to sign this, I think. Name. That is exactly the same as mine. Where was your creativity? That was it. That was it. Because that's what had in my mind when you when okay. we first got it. That wasn't very good at all. There so, you go. um, do you want to sign that? We can actually give that away. Part of the competition. We'll give that away as part of the competition. Go and I'll sign it over here then as well. Go All right. There we right. are. Lovely. So that, that's not a bad start. I, I don't like, think that's bad at Do you know what? Well. What do you do with Brilliant. this? Because I've smelt this stuff before and normally, to be frank, it's it smells not very nice. But this smells really nice. Um, I think it's got natural oils in it, like eucalyptus and Eucalyptus, stuff. Mm. that's yeah. what I can smell, yeah. So that's probably what you can smell, it's quite strong. Um, it is, I don't make nice. the henna, so I don't really know what goes into it, but I know it's all do natural. Do people come to you for bespoke pieces and say, look, we want you to create X, Y and Z for us? Definitely. I mean, the reason I've called my business Best Spoke Henna is because I want it, I want my customer to have a lot of creative control over the pieces. What's been the most unusual piece you've that's done? That's what I was going to ask, yeah. Um, I recently made a piece which says, when I first saw you, I was like, wow, with the Arabic wow. Um, that was quite um, unusual. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of it is actually the, the designs from my portfolio online, I mean, and they just want things changed a bit, like colours and stuff. I mean, looking back, where was the initial inspiration? I mean, was it was it Ash Kumar, or was it you know when you saw his work, or or does it just something? Because you said you had no interest in it at all. What was it the yeah. moment where you just said, "Wow, I, I can really do this"? Well, Ash Kumar taught me sort of the um, traditional designs, mm. and I don't really do traditional designs, and he does it on the skin. I did it on sort of products. Um, the inspiration. It actually came from that piece of paper. When I saw it on the piece of paper, I just thought that looks great. But also, you know, travelling to different countries, like like I said, Turkey, I've been to several times, and I found I just I take a little camera with me everywhere, and even if it's just like a gate or like a door, yeah, and that, I'll you just you take pictures, and then I'll go back, and then I'll like try and like infuse loads of different. Well, well look, we're going to give some of this stuff away. We are. We're going to give away this collector's item. Uh, matching this pair. One. Here. Matching Oi, pair. We're giving away this Forget item. that Mickey Mouse thing here. Look, we've got a matching pair. Beautiful. You know what? It's a shame. I hope no one ever burns them because they're so beautiful. You wouldn't really want them I to, think they're not to burn, to burn down. down. My Western market, they always want to burn them, but the like sort of. Asians yeah, they want to keep it there yeah. and give it to their wedding daughters and future generations yeah. and pass it down. <laughs> so that's it. Right, if you're looking to win a chance of winning this piece of henna artwork, listen up closely to these details. For a chance to win this piece of henna artwork, answer the following question. Which one of these people is a well-known henna artist? A. Ash Kumar B. Kumar Ashley C. Arshad Kumar Email your answer A, B or C along with...